Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Pack 1 pick 1, Sternheim Unleashed, probably the best rare in the set to open pack 1 pick 1 since it's also very splashable with Fortel, just being a single white. So easy to accommodate into a lot of different decks and incredibly powerful if you make two angels on turn 5, it's very difficult to lose. And uh, next up, like Behold, would probably be my next pick. But let's take uh, Sternheim Unleashed. Second pack. Um, no amazing white card. But as we've mentioned, Sternheim can easily be splashed. So I'm looking at Behold the Multiverse, Shimmer Drift Veil, maybe Frostbite, but I would still take Behold over it. So yeah, I think we just take a Behold here. We might end up blue-white or we might end up some sort of snow deck, in which case it does hurt to pass Shimmer Drift Veil. But I think I still prefer the powerful card draw spell here. And then see where we end up. Alright, I mean, we could go pretty deep here and take Binding the Old Gods, which is by far the most powerful card. There's no blue card I want, there's no white card I want, and the snow land is a mountain which we're not super interested in. So like I could take a Sculptor of Winter, in which case we don't need to splash black in our snow deck. Or I can just take Binding and end up in some sort of multicolor snow deck, hopefully. Alright, so probably gonna start picking up some of these snow lands. Uh, Basalt Ravager, good card, but not going to shine in the deck we're trying to build here. And then Sculptor of Winter is probably the next best card for us. Lindworm, also Fine Curve Topper. But I'll take the Snowland. And I'll take probably another Snowland here. Not a fan of Raven Form. There's some white cards, but it looks like we're going to be splashing white in maybe some sort of Sultai deck or base blue-green deck. So I'm not going to want to play these whites 1 and 2 drops. So we'll just take Floodplain here, which is perfect. Now we've got a decision. And there's a lot of directions we can go in. Could take Snow Covered Swamp as kind of a safe bet. Could take Feed the Serpent, which does commit us a bit more to black than maybe we would like. There's also Draugr's Helm, which does require double black to make the token. So I think I would rather take Feed the Serpent then. And then there's also some red removal spells, but I think we want to stick to like Sultai as a base, splashing white. So I think I'm leaning Feed the Serpent, just because this is shaping up like a control deck. So I would rather have a spot removal and then like cards like Starnheim Unleashed to try and close out the game, maybe wield that Lindworm instead of the Helm, which is better suited to a slightly more aggressive build. I will take a Mistwalker, which is fine in any deck, although, hmm, is it better than Snow-Covered Island? I'm a big fan of Mistwalker since it enables so many cool synergies. It's a good blocker and can also close out the game. Versus Snow-Covered Island, which is a great Snow-Covered land since blue is often one of the main snow colors. The fact that it's in the pack 7th pick is also a good sign for the snow deck. But currently we don't really have any snow synergies yet. So this one's close. Yeah, I think I'll take the island just because it's here seventh pick, so we might be the only snow drafters. At least that's the hope. And then now Sculptor versus Amulet is also an interesting one. We might wheel two more Sculptors in the next couple packs, which we opened earlier. In which case I might prefer the Amulet as a good defensive card. Yeah and then hope to wheel some of the Sculptors we've passed earlier. Disdainful Stroke, one copy seems okay. Could also take a Way Down, although we might not have a ton of creatures early on to enable it. So I think I prefer Stroke. Alright, it doesn't look like we're getting those Sculptors of Winter. Uh, I'll take a snow-covered mountain. I don't think I'm playing snakeskin veil in this deck. Not a huge fan of the recruiter. 
And there's still a chance we end up more in red. Because it's not like we have a ton of green or black so far. Nothing here that I really want. Maybe a skull raid. Alright, there's a sculptor. I guess that's a good sign. And then... Don't really see myself playing any of these. Maybe Faithful as a filler creature here at 3. Are we going to be the Ox Plow deck? I think we passed Plow, pack 1, pick 1. So someone else already has it. But also doesn't seem like a Razor Draugr deck. Well, we opened a pretty nice rare here with Turgrid, God of Fright. Definitely an incentive to lean into black. Can play Lantern for single black, and that's already quite powerful. It's going to be better than an aggressive deck, but I'll still happily play it here. Author cards worth pointing out, another amulet, another sculptor, although would probably take Shimmer Drift Veil. But yeah, we'll take a Turgrid instead. And then another interesting pack. We've got Priest as a powerful removal option in a snow deck. Mistwalker, I've already mentioned a few times, and then Troll as a snow payoff, which we're hopefully able to wheel. And then we can take the Forest here, although we don't have any red cards we're planning to splash. So I think it's between Priest and Mistwalker. And I could see taking the Mistwalker and then hope to wheel either Priest or Troll, and one of the snow payoffs should wheel, considering we wheeled some of the other snow cards. I think Crown is very good, but I don't think this is the deck for it. You want to have more cheap creatures to equip. But if you have two runes, I think Crown is an excellent card, and a card you can easily take early and take runes aggressively. Yeah, I think I Mistwalker here. There's another crown, speaking of crowns, but there's a packmate and we don't pass packmates here. There's also path to the world tree, although I don't have any shimmer drift veils yet for fixing. I think packmate's just going to be the more solid option here. It's close, like, I would take path if there weren't a packmate in a pack. I think it's like packmate, then path, then tree line. Hopefully the tree line wheels. And now probably Glittering Frosts. Uh, Shepherd's also decent, although we don't have many 2-drops to get back. This would have been awesome with uh, Path to the World Tree, because it returns any permanence. It's pretty slow, but it's kind of cute. Doesn't look like a Harbinger deck. Frost just provides good fixing. Now I'll take the Frost. Ooh, wow, what a pack. Jeez, Spirit of the Elder Guard is going to be the pick, I think. But Boreal Outrider would be amazing. Chasm would be awesome. Sculptor would be awesome. But yeah, Spirit of the Elder Guard gets a land. Going to grow pretty large. And unlike the Priest, this counts each snow permanent. So not only lands... Uh, this is one of the least interesting snow lands. Do we still take it? It's probably nothing else in the pack we want, so sure. And oof, this is another tough pick. I would definitely play port in this deck if we got it, but there's a forest and a Bergstrider in the pack. I think we need Bergstrider. We've got a decent number of snow lands. I don't have much at five. This is a good defensive option. Huh. I guess we can splash Judge of Valor. We're pretty having to black for cards like Turgrid, Feed the Serpent, and it's only single white. And I mean, what else would we take here? Guardian Gladewalker, I guess would be fine, but not incredibly exciting.
All right, I think I got to take the land over Sculptor now. Especially now that we picked up a double black white card. Yeah, I would love some uh, one three Vandals, masked Vandal. Good blocker early if we need it, and very relevant utility late. Hopefully we don't have to play Invader, but I guess it's a curve topper if we need one. All right, we wield the tree line, so that's great. The one concern here is that we have a lot of tap lands, but we also don't have much going on early. Wow, we wield Shepherd. Someone took Path to the World Tree, which is interesting. I mean, I'll splash a Shepherd, can still get back Sculpture, hopefully we get another one. Nice. All right, so the deck's coming together nicely. Sculpture also a great combo with Glittering Frost, since it essentially taps for four mana that way. Uncommon for the Vault. Ooh, wow, even a Lindworm, definitely an upgrade over Invader. Last pack. Not incredibly exciting. I guess we could splash a Fall of the Imposter, although... I think I would rather splash Bounding Gold at that point. Snow-covered planes, not really a priority. We do need to pick up some more creatures, but the plan of just ramping into removal and big creatures is also not a bad one. I think I like Bound as just a cheap removal spell. We're not going to be double spelling very early to turn on Berserker. So it doesn't really fit into our game plan. And Jarl also needs more cheap creatures to enable it. Alright, we're not going to pass packmates in this household. Pathway would also be great. And then Mast Vandal would also be a great pickup here. Snow-covered island also. But I have standards. And hello, blood on the snow. If there's ever a deck where that's going to shine, it's this one. Can hope to wheel dual land. Glade Warden would be okay. Although our deck has plenty of four drops already. Can take another Feed the Serpent. I don't hate Outrider just as a creature that survives Demon Bolt. That's a reasonable blocker. Any chance we wheel Outrider here? It's not impossible. Probably don't need second Shepherd. So it's Feed the Serpent versus Outrider versus Snow Covered Plains. I guess there's Augury Raven too. Probably take another Feed the Serpent and hope to wheel Outrider. It's close though. Hoo hoo, wow. Binding the Old Gods number two. I guess now I wish I had Outrider instead of second Feed the Serpent, but I think we'll be okay. Gotta take Veil vale every time. Yeah, not gonna splash Arnie Slays a Troll when we don't have any creatures to fight with in the first place. Seventh pick Burkstrider or Island. Probably take another Burkstrider here to give us some more win conditions. But uh, Island would have been quite nice too. I think we've got enough snow lands that will be okay. Just gotta make sure we have enough playables. Ice Tunnel. Seems great. Not a fan of the Yeti as a win condition. Only play it if you've got like the one drop that needs you to have a ton of snow permanence. I'll take a planes, can probably play one and then no normal planes. Yeah, I think we have got just enough playables here. I'm not gonna play any of these. Got a Faithful in the sideboard already. And yeah, maybe we play Strategic Planning. All right, Raven seems better. So this is more or less the deck. So not quite five color snow. Uh, so I'm probably not going to play Mountain or meadow since we should have enough snow 
lands as is. Yeah, I probably don't need snow covered planes actually. But uh we'll see here, so let's remove all basics. So islands, great, mountains, probably not necessary. Floodplains great, sinkholes great, ice tunnels great, meadow I could see cutting, tree lines great, Rhinewood Falls is great, and Vale is great. So three Six, seven snow lands. Plus we have glittering frosts. Yeah, that's probably enough. The dual lands still have the forest type for binding. So that's actually quite awesome here. So we can get our tree line and rhinewood falls with binding of the old gods. So we'll we'll have to see if we want the snow covered plains here in a second. The white cards, we have bounding golds. Shepherd, which is single white if we foretell. And Sternheim Unleashed, which is single white if we foretell. And Judge of Valor, which is also single white. So not a ton of white needed. Then the rest of the deck is kind of Sultai colored. Packmate we can foretell. Amulet is more of a 5 drop. I might play Recluse. More foretell cards. Uh, Spirit of the Elder Guard, I guess, also benefits from having a Snow Plains if we want to get white untapped. So that might be worth it here. And then I don't think we need Meadow or Mountain. So... 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This could be an 18 land deck too, although... 17 might be enough considering we have double binding, sculptor times two, and glittering frost. So I need to make uh, two cuts here, I believe. And then we gotta figure out the mana base, which is gonna be somewhat challenging. So we need double black for feed the serpents, potentially Turgrid, and eventually blood on the snow. Although we do have sculptor that can help achieve double black if we have single black snow lands which we do have a decent number of. Then green we need early to play Packmate, Sculptor, Frost. And blue we don't need a whole lot of it. So we're actually just sort of splashing blue too, if you look at it. Which makes things easier. I guess Amulet needs double blue if we want to get the token. But that's a turn 5 double blue play, which is not too difficult when we have Binding to potentially fix our mana too. Uh, I could see cutting this Daneful Stroke since our deck is mostly tapping out. I guess Feed the Serpents an instant that we can keep up. But, uh, and uh, I guess the Behold. But yeah, not the best this Daneful Stroke deck. We're going to be behind on board because we're going to be kind of messing around with our tap lands a bunch. So we're probably not going to be able to afford to keep up a counter spell very often. So I don't need any more planes, I believe, since we have one, two, three for five white sources built in already, plus ways to search them up, since this can get tree line, so don't need any planes. Probably want a few islands, swamps, and forests, so we'll have to figure out the exact numbers here. So never mind, this is 15 lands, so need to make one more cut if we want to play 17. How many green sources do we have at the moment? Three four, five, six-ish. Want to get that number up to at least eight. How many blue sources do we have? Three, four, five, six, seven-ish. That should be plenty. So I can maybe even cut an islands. And then how many black sources do we have at the moment? Two, three, four, Five-ish. Yeah, definitely want to add some black. So this is with 18 lands. I uh, can probably cut one land. And then uh, Shepherd can be foretold and played on four. This is kind of a turn five play, so our curve is pretty high. 
There is an argument for cutting Giant's Amulet because we have so many fives already. And that also cuts the double blue spell in the deck, so we don't need as much blue. Keep the Bounding Gold. And then... I can maybe cut Basic Islands, leaving me with one, two, three, four, five-ish blue sources for, at the end of the day, five blue cards, which are all single blue. I guess Mistwalker wouldn't mind having a bit more blue, but yeah, it's still fine if we only pump it once. Yeah, the Binding is going to do a ton of fixing in this deck since it can get all the different green dual lands. Yeah, I don't hate this. The curve is pretty high, it's pretty greedy. I would have liked a few more two drops. An extra Sculptor of Winter would have been nice. But uh, the deck's definitely powerful. So I'm kind of excited to give this a shot. Yeah, this hand seems pretty good. We do need one more Black Source, but then Spirit can get a second one. Right, that can name black. Sir Mana should be sorted out here once we play Spirit of the Elder Guard. Masked Vandal. So, which one do we get? Probably Sinkhole. So Blood on the Snow could even get back, or Spirit of the Elder Guard. So I'm kind of hoping they destroy it. I guess just casting Blood on the Snow will put it in the graveyard, because it happens afterwards. Don't need to select a target when we cast it. Alright. That was a trade. So it's not even necessary to Blood on the Snow. Huh. Well, now it's not really an option anymore because of Raidan. I could feed the Serpent Raidan to then Blood on the Snow. can play Lindworm, but it feels like a waste if I'm going to Blood on the Snow. So I don't hate play lands and I'm plan to feed the Serpent Raidan. Hope they play more creatures and then Blood on the Snow get back spirits. Perfect. So it's blood on the snow, get back more spirits. And we've got four snow permanents. And get... Maybe we want an extra untap land. this turn probably going to be a game where we play Lantern since we've got so much mana. So next turn I'll have 9 mana so I can go Judge of Valor into Lantern so this turn we can Lindworm and play a tap land. Although I guess never mind. Do we have enough black? 
Yeah, we have triple black, right? So we should be able to Valor plus Lantern. So play a land first. Yeah, our deck is really snowballing right now. Attack. Who knows, maybe our opponent's got their own sweeper. Although, Lantern's gonna be pretty effective against it. Make sure we leave black untapped. And then we'll wait to activate it end of turn in case they Doomscar, otherwise they would just sack Sentinel. Broken wings, alright. And our opponent explodes. Ooh, double binding. Sign me up. Definitely play a tree line first since we have the two elves we might play on turn two. And our sweeper. So we've got a removal that also ramps us into our sweeper. Just needs a fourth land here and we're gonna be in great shape. I can at least play Mistwalker next turn so we don't get run over. Next turn we get to Binding. So if they kill Mistwalker we get to kill Firewalker. And then eventually Blood on the Snow can clean up the board nicely. Maybe get back our Spirit of the Elder Guard once again. Yeah, we've got 2 for 1, 2 for 1, 2 for 1. Potential more than 2 for 1. It's gonna be hard to lose, but we'll see. Maybe our opponent has access to Koma, the Mythic Serpent in blue-green. Although I guess we have that covered with Feed the Serpent. And Demon Bolt, yep. In the fang bearer. And then just get a tap land here. So what's our plan? I could set up a Starnheim Unleashed, make a couple angels, although I probably want to wipe the board first. So how about I foretell Starnheim Unleashed this turn and then next turn Blood on the snow. And then we'll unleash for a bunch. Could also play Spirit of the Elder Guard. But we already have a creature in the graveyard we can get back with Blood on the Snow. So it's not like I need to get more value. Although I guess Spirit would give me more lands to play a bigger Starnheim Unleashed. Yeah. A lot of ways we can uh, do this, but... I guess this is fine. So we'll see if 
If they commit another creature to the board, can consider blood on the snow. If not, probably just take the one damage here. I guess one way I can lose is if they have double mammoth growth. Although that would still not quite be lethal. I don't know, I'll take it. Alright, run amok. Puts me to seven. And slays a troll to fight. Alright, fair enough. That was a good setup. Although I think we'll be just fine here. So... Can Blood on the Snow get back? Spirit of the Elder Guard. And play another tap land. That seems okay, and then next turn can foretell, maybe play Turgrid. No value from the second chapter. Dwarven Hammer. Alright, that card's kind of scary. So I don't mind destroying it with Binding. Just destroy the equipment itself, because that's a thing we can do. And then we can foretell Starnheim Unleashed. And probably leave the spirit back for now. So if they have an act of treason, the spirit would lose all its power essentially, so we're not dead. So let's count. X equals one, two, three, four. Seems good. Is there a reason not to go for the full amount and keep up feed the serpent? Probably. But this is more fun. I guess I can attack. Got 16 damage in the air. And by the way, we still have some good cards in hand. Packmates. The good cards just keep on coming. Yeah, we'll attack. I could feed the serpent 2-1 uh, in case they have a demon bolt for angels so we still kill them. But I think we'll be okay. We keep drawing our uh, sweeper here, I'm not complaining. This time we don't have as many snow lands to go with it. But Binding can get at least one eventually. So we're a bit slow out of the gates. Green White Sculptor Winter. No Snowlands just yet. And next turn we can Binding, start ramping. Could double feed the Serpent. A bit light on threats, but we're also not going to die anytime soon, and our late game's quite powerful. 
Alvin bow plus a token. Do we want to kill Sculptor or the Alvin bow itself? Given that we have so much spot removal, I think just killing the equipment is probably the way to go. And then Blood on the Snow will clean up all the small creatures eventually. So this can get, let's see, a green, I guess green-white is probably the land we get. Ooh, Packmate was excellent. Yeah, we can get blue or white. I think I prefer white. And then just cast Packmates. No need to feed the Serpent Sculpture just yet. Play it before playing the land in case we draw tap lands, which we did. And now this can name blue. Still only have two snow lands, so can't get back Packmate with blood on the snow. But uh, yeah, our hand is stacked. Kind of want the opponent to just commit more to the board so we can clean it up. Another card foretold. Ooh, Turgrid. Turgrid's great because it lets me play Lantern without overextending into my own sweeper. I think that's the plan. So that gives us a wing condition, so now if we just... Alright, another broken wings seems to be a theme today. That does put Turgrid in my graveyard, so I could eventually get Turgrid back with blood on the snow, I suppose. In search for greatness. Alright. Brookstrider. I guess we're just gonna go on the beat town plan if our opponent's not committing. I think I'm fine with the trade and then play Lindworm. And if they take it, I still play Lindworm. Yeah, they could have a Doom Scar, which is why they're kind of playing it slowly. So I'm probably not going to play a Strider before we figure out what these Fortel cards are. Could also be Iron Verdicts. I think I'm just attacking. If they chump Lindworm with a 1-1, one -one, they might be setting up Iron Verdict, in which case... I have the option of using Feed the Serpent on a 1-1 before damage, but that feels like a waste. So if they want Iron Verdict, that's fine by me. So I think we just attack with both and see what happens. Right, it doesn't look like an Iron Verdict, but does kind of look like a Doomscar is being set up here. So I'm just gonna pass. Have enough pressure in play already, can back it up with spot removal. So no reason to overextend and lose all my threats. Pack mates, alright. That was a good turn for them.
So, would like to draw a few more snow lines to set up our blood on the snow. Free Outrider, find target for Feed the Serpent potentially. Alright, Bounding Gold. So now, blood on the snow does look reasonable. Mm, but I wouldn't be getting any value. We're pretty far from getting anything significant back from the graveyard though. I would need two more snow lands. So what I could do is pass, maybe feed the Serpent Outrider. See if they commit more to the board, maybe then blood on the snow and take eight. Yeah, I don't think I commit another Burkstrider here. Alright. So this is just going to be blood on the snow then. Opponent's getting good value from their search for greatness. Opponent's a little suspicious here. Still nothing to get back, unfortunately. I don't have form black mana, so destroy all creatures. All right, back to square one. We're not in an incredibly dominant position, but I also don't hate my chances here with three decent cards in hand. All right, another lindworm. <laughs> Am I going to binding the search for greatness here? I mean, can Strider Lindworm? By destroying search, we don't let them scry each turn, so they're eventually going to draw more lands, which is probably what we want long term. And then I still have double feed for creatures. So don't mind Strider the Lindworm for now and binding search. They still have a lot of cards left, 21, so we're still only halfway our library. So the scry one each turn is going to start adding up now that we're in the late game. Alright, Bounding Golds. Also reasonable answer for Lindworm, although exiling it might be better. So we'll start here. We have a few more lands in play than our opponents, so our deck is more action-packed. Alright. Binding could have also potentially answered something like a Bounding Gold, but drew another creature. Sculptor's fine. Hoo hoo hoo. Hello there. I think we'll be just fine. Probably unnecessary to attack, but we have a Feed the Serpent in case my opponent goes like Mammoth Growth plus Kaya's Onslaught. Yep, you got it. Eh, might as well. I count nine mana. Eleven mana? <laughs> Counting is hard. Uh, 
All right. Don't hate this. Double pack mates to play out early, which will hopefully draw us into more mana. Opponent on blue-white, also foretells. Play this before playing land in case we draw tap land. All right. Next turn we can hard cast pack mate for four, and be on our merry way. It's also an argument for playing lantern as soon as possible. Ooh, spirit seems better. And then blue-black gets all my colors sorted here. So I have double black and blue. Next turn, play land, play another pack mate, presumably. Another raven. Fair enough. Yeah, I think just another pack mates. Get on the board. Draw lands for Lindworm. Make it difficult for the opponent to race us. Recluse can also trade for Raven. Opponent's already down to 11. And all our creatures essentially drew us a card. Alright, they've got amulet but no blue mana to make a token here. They need double blue. So instead just equips Raven to stay back. So that is an effective blocker. If I attack with everyone, hit them for 6 down to 5. Might still be worth it, honestly. And play a Lindworm. And the lower they get, the more effective Lantern also becomes. can play two creatures that block the ravens with Recluse and Mistwalker in the same turn. And now they gotta deal with a Lindworm. Starnheim Corsair, Serpo and Blue-White Flyers here, and a Bounding Gold. Alright, that was decent. Hits us for three. Maybe. It's gonna stay back. Alrighty. So... I like getting Lantern online. And then... I guess that's uh, it. We can foretell Shepard. And then probably no attacks this time. And I'll probably use Lantern now. So they probably have the Bounce spell here for single blue if that's holding priority. Yep. Sure. Put and discard their last card.
think we name black here. And then spirit is now a 4-4. Four, four. But I still don't think we have a great attack since they can just double block. Next turn we can replay a lantern, which is gonna clock them pretty quickly. Could also consider Feed the Serpent to maybe set up a better attack with Spirit of the Elder Guard. If we draw Binding, we can also destroy the Giant's Amulet, perhaps. Although I can also destroy the Bounding Gold, which is probably better. Spectral Steel to make a 5-6 Augury Raven. That's aggressive. So, a lantern, and then they'll probably sacrifice Corsair here, and then I can untap it as well. Because they can't afford to take three. So, do we have lethal somehow? Now we'll just make them sank the other raven. Well, now they're just dead. Alright, Turgrid's Lantern. Definitely uh, helping us close out this one. Get to use our mana optimally, turn one tap land, turn two foretell, turn three another tap land, plus probably play the pack mate. Got a snow land for Burkstrider. Yeah, just a nice hand in general. Uh oh, turn one battlefield raptor is one way we could get run over. Alright. So, Packmate or Raven? I think I'm still leaning Packmates. Yeah, that's a great start on the play. Let's see if Packmate can stem the bleeding. So, it doesn't matter too much here. I guess we'll get white online. We can feed the Serpent next turn if they play some sort of aura. Happy trading for the Firewalker. And then Brook Strider can also stabilize nicely. Alright. And a Helm. Yeah, this is gonna hurt. Starnheim unleashed. Don't think we're gonna be unleashing here. So I can pass with Feed the Serpent up or I can play Raven. Feels like I should just feed the Serpent to Firewalker before they get to attack and enable boasts. And there's a chance they play another creature and give it haste that I kill instead. And then next turn, Burkstrider. Best case scenario, they equip Firewalker, but it's probably not going to happen. Braggart. Yep. Yep. Are we giving it hastes? So, a Strider probably taps down Firewalker, otherwise they can attack into Strider with Helm. 
Still going to be under quite a bit of pressure. Lindworm's going to be pretty key. Hopefully we draw an untapped land for it. So we're at three. All right, time for Lindworm. And then can I afford to attack? We do need to start turning the corner, otherwise the Raptor is just gonna end the game in a few turns. We do have Raven to block and Starnheim unleashed, so it's definitely close. Could also play Raven plus Fortel. Probably then play Lindworm next turn before we make any Angels. So yeah, if we can dodge some sort of pump spell, that might be better. Because then we don't take the damage from Raptor. They're probably going to move the equipment to Firewalker instead. And then I'm fine trading for Brookstrider. It's close. Yeah, I like being able to block the Raptor's damage. So let's go with this line. And Fortel. And then next turn, probably a Lindworm. We are dead to a lot of things. That puts us to one. And our opponent foretells. Binding, interesting. Probably still Lindworm here. And then the question is whether Brookstrider attacks. What can the foretold card be here? Demon Bolt, maybe? Hmm. I guess Doomscar Titan could be bad if we attack. Alright, I guess I'll stay back for one turn. Don't really need double whites. And the next one makes some angels. That's okay. Okay, we're at two. So we probably have to attack with Strider and Lindworm. I get to make three angels. Uh, they get to put me to one with a helm attack. And then I gotta kill them the turn after pretty much. And then I guess Binding also kills helm. also make fewer angels and binding but I think we gotta go for three angels and then binding next turn and just go to one here close game Spirit is equipped. 
Now we're gonna get rid of the helm. Still have feed the serpent up. Could also kill both creatures attack with all. Which is also likely to work. Uh, I think killing Helm's just safer. And Angels also have Vigilance, so should be fine here. Attack with all. If I feed the Serpent one blocker, chump, 12. Yeah, it's not quite lethal, so I think we just attack with all and keep up feed the Serpent in case of shenanigans. Yeah, that makes sense. Let's see if our insane draw managed to beat the curve out draw from red white aggro. Master Skulls can get back Helm, but Feed the Serpents has got that covered. So they were actually close to almost killing us here. GG. Wow, what a game. So clean 7-0. One very close call against the blue-red deck that we probably should have lost had our opponent used their treasure tokens, but I'm not going to complain. So yeah, a greedy snow deck if you get Good rares to go with it can definitely work out nicely. Crack some packs. Graven Lore, also a nice one for this type of snow deck. Would probably be my pack one, pick one here. A Reckless Crew. Is this the worst rare in the set? There's probably a couple bad ones. Um, yeah, probably just Behold here. Sarulf is great. Yeah, I think I would give Sarulf a try. Would also fit in nicely in the type of deck we just drafted. Clarion Spirit's also great. Raven Ice Eye Troll we didn't end up getting in this draft also would have been nice. Crippling Fear can be great. Is it better than Demon Bolt? I do think red, generally speaking, is going to be better than black. But Crippling Fear can be a lot more devastating than Demon Bolt, so... Probably go with a Sweeper here. But, uh, yeah. We're also passing a Feed the Serpent, I guess, so gotta keep that in mind. So there's definitely an argument for just taking the Demon Bolt out of this pack. The Raven's Warning is a very fun card, especially in Sealed. Don't know if anyone opened this in their Arena Open Sealed pool, as you get access to your entire sideboard if you get to connect, and maybe you've got some treasure tokens for fixing. So, yeah, I wouldn't mind giving this a try, but Turgrid's Shadow is potentially quite powerful. Finn's always decent. And the Bears of Lejara, also a great card. And a nice incentive to build around changelings. But uh, a lot of good options in this pack. The Veil for a multicolor snow deck, Squash for any red giants based deck are good cards too. Alright, sweet. So yeah, I want to thank everyone for watching. It's been a blast and we'll be back on Tuesday as usual. So I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.